Hello and welcome back to Better Minecraft Mine Colonies. Now, last episode, we mastered the creation of plate armor and also made a bunch of it to put inside our warehouse so that our guards will be switching to that as soon as they can. Now, I also mentioned that we were going to be upgrading the industrial district to level five. That's the blacksmith, the smeltery, the stonemason and the crusher's hut are all going to be zooped up to level five. So let's jump into that. So before the episode started, I took a quick look at our library and our university to see if the research was completed, and it was! So our dudes are running now at 5% quicker speed. And when you couple that with how much extra room they have in their bags, I expected these builds to go up super quick. And for the most part they did, the first three buildings went up without a hitch. Well, Alyssa took a little bit longer on the smeltery, but it was the stonemason's hut that was the real holdup, and then I realized it's because the purr purr blocks that are so integral to the build were a bit tricky for our colony to manufacture. And also for some reason, Nuki got stuck trying to build the building, so what I had to do was go back into the game, reset the camera of course, and assign any old thing to build it instead, because you know what, she's probably the best builder we have on the colony. And bada boom bada bing, sometime later all of these buildings are complete up to level 5. So why don't you join me as we jump in game to see what they look like. Alright alright, so here we are. Now actually one of the things that's been bothering me is the fact that we've been having kids being born left, right and centre. And in the chat log all I see is, you know, X grew up, Y grew up, all of these kids are growing up but they're not getting any jobs. I mean, oh my god, the town hall is full of these guys. Oh my god, though, this guy looks pretty cool. Look at this dress. That's pretty freaking amazing. And I guess that's because the town hall is now level five, so all of these colonists look really cool. Look at this guy with his, like, hat going on. That's very cool. Ooh, don't want to look up there. So a quick look here. Are we getting close? Ooh, yeah, so we've got 152 slots and 144 citizens, so things are getting pretty crazy. Oh my god, we've got 51 guards. We've got 24 knights, 5 druids, and 20 archers. That's pretty freaking insane, so I'm not quite sure why many people weren't coming to the, uh, to the banner when we called them. Maybe I need to go around and make sure all of the towers are hooked up. Anyway, the big problem that we have at the moment is, take a look at this. 19 dudes are unemployed. And I'm in a real bind. I don't know what we can give these guys to do. All of the jobs are kind of taken. We've got one of every single building. And I'm trying to think here, what buildings do we need? Where are our shortcomings? And I think this is where it's going to be. So I went over to the clipboard and I thought, well, you know what? Compost is always an issue. So maybe we need another composter's hut. But also another problem we've had on the colony is pigs. For some reason, the pigs have started breeding like there's no tomorrow. And I don't know what's going on over at the swineherd's hut, but we have a million and one pigs. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if there's around 200 pigs here. Which is a big old number, and I'm not quite sure what we're going to do about it. Anyway, let's take a look at some of these builds. So, level 5 smeltery, looking pretty swish. If I do say so myself. Now, the bottom floor looks same old, same old. But how do we get to the second floor? Is there stairs around the side? Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. This place looks mega swish. I'm kind of jealous, actually, because if this was a survival playthrough and this was my house, I'd love it. This is a really cool build. Really, uh, really kind of nice and uh, intimate, cozy, very awesome. And moving on to the blacksmith. Now, compared to level 4, the blacksmith's hut doesn't change massively. Some coal around the sides. The forge looks okay, but not much has really changed here. Lots of lava. Yeah, and all in all, not a great huge change. However, oh, there is an upstairs bit that I've never really looked at. Ah, okay. Oh, wait, there's a roof as well. What's up here? Ah, uh, yeah, a bit of a, a boring attic. Well, okay, yeah, so not much is really going on here. 
Ooh, lots of duck eggs though. What's the deal with that? And so many sticks. So weird. Well, let's get rid of some of these duck eggs because they suck. Moving swiftly on. And so the stonemason's hut. And yeah, if we come around the back, you can see all of these purr purr blocks are where we were having some issues with the build. I think at least. We've got a nice little house at the back here. Tall tower. The main building hasn't changed too much, but if we go up onto the second floor... Oh yeah, well, as you'd imagine, lots of stone and lots of stone cutters. Because that's kind of her job. Oh look, you can even go up to the roof. Wait a minute, what are you doing up here? Don't you have a job to do? Oh right, I suppose not. So basically what we need to do this episode is assign our builders to some real big tasks. And what we're really going for again is 200 dudes, so we need to make sure our builders are on the houses. Last but not least, uh, the Crusher's hut now looks like um, Booga Suga Wolf Dragon himself is stuck up on the wheel. He can't get down. <laughs> well, you know, it sucks to be you. You should have thought about this when you were building it. So yeah. And again, the Crusher's hut is kind of the same old, same old. The tower gets bigger, but the bottom floor stays the same pretty much. Ah, so I'll tell you what I will do. I'm going to get the stone smeltery that's level 4. This should also be upgraded. And likewise, I reckon the glass blower's hut could stand to be higher level as well, because at the moment it's only level three also. Wait, where is the hut? There it is. Oh wait, no, it's level three. Ooh, we're, we're way behind here. So, Captain's Log started whenever it is right now. We're going to go over to the university and make sure we've got some research on the go. And of course, it's Yale now. Now riddle me this, Batman, which research do we want to do? Well, a lot of the research we were waiting for was locked behind the blacksmith, the smeltery, and those things being level 5. Now they are level 5, we can start to get those going. So yeah, look at this. What is speed? That's a really good question. Well, apparently it's citizen block break speed. There are five researchers, well, there's four researchers here that are locked behind the blacksmith being level 5, and that's citizen tool durability, Miners finding more ores, and Citizen Block play speed but also break speed. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get these four under wraps. And the fifth one is going to be... Ooh, let's take a look. Yeah, I reckon it's going to be RTM. Workers can learn 100% more recipes. Because that's going to make things crazy. And it's going to mean we can teach our recipe dudes almost everything in the game. Even with mods. So let's go grab what we need. Now, luckily enough, I have some gold ore because of all of those chests we raided in the Foundry Dungeon. It had gold ore as a reward, so we don't have to worry about our miners only finding the raw gold clumps. Oh, luck be a lady tonight. We've got 64 diamonds in here as well. Amazing. Oh, mercy me. So we've got a whole bunch now of iron and redstone. Hopefully this is enough. It might not be. Let's take a look. So here we go, we're going to learn steel bracing. Amazing veins. Seems automatic. And now what is this speed? And that brings us up to four of five researchers. So what's going to be the last one we do? Well, let's take another look in civilian, see if there's anything tasty down here. We learned athlete that gives us walk speed last time. So what can we do? Ah, now happiness is a big one for us because we're going to have a lot of unemployment and not enough guards for quite some time. So I reckon if we can get 18 cakes, Spectacle is the one. Now unfortunately, cakes are really hard to wrangle. They don't stack at all in any way. So we're going to have to go and uh, fill our entire pack with them almost. But well, we need 18, so that's what, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So we're going to need, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rows of 3 cakes. So let's go and order some up here at the post box. 15, please. And off we go. Ooh, man, milk could be a trouble. No, actually, I think it's going to be okay. And we'll leave that to... Oh, my God, look at the speed of this guy. Honestly, I think the couriers go way quicker when they run versus the rails. I really do wish I could delete the rails technology. Anyway, we are where we are. So while we wait for those cakes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the mine, not the mine, the uh, the underground bit. You know, the, what are we calling it? The catacombs. That's right. Is it in the list? Yeah, the caverns. Is it the caverns? 
Yeah, here we go. And we're going to set in motion all of these builds to get going. All of these houses, because we're going to need them if we're going to get to 200 dudes. And so the final house, the Caledonian Mansion. Well, an underground mansion, actually. I mean, is a mansion okay? Would you guys mind living in a mansion if it was underground and you got no sun whatsoever? Oh, man, you have to drink so much Sunny D. There we go. Now we can leave these things to brew because we've got the clipboard and we can always see what these builders need to make it. And that's important because so many of these houses are a different style to the ones we're used to. So that means they're going to need all kinds of materials that we don't yet have crafting recipes for around the colony. Alrighty, right. So what else are we going to do? Well, it's time to think about these unemployed mother truckers. So come with me, if you will, over to my house. Now, the best way to keep your colonists occupied is to put them into education. And I'm thinking maybe that's the best thing we can do. A library at maximum level can fit, ooh, I guess like eight, maybe ten dudes as students. And so I think if we have a couple more libraries, that would be really good. So a couple of these bad boys. Wait, what? So there we go, two libraries, and we can put those somewhere on the colony. Now, also, compost is always an issue, so we're going to make another composter's hut. And there we go. With these three buildings, we're going to get, what, 8, 16, 17 more jobs with three buildings. It really does feel like libraries are the one. Now the only question is, where do we have space to actually put these buildings? Because we really have almost run out of space completely. Well, we're going to go over to hospitality because just over here, beyond the hospital, beyond the uh, the engineer's hut. In fact, there's another one. This guy's only level four and he's kind of part of Industrial Valley. So uh, we're going to upgrade him too. But yeah, it does look like the last region we have to improve is this area over here next to the concrete mixer's hut. Now it is nice. It's not really that flat, but there's loads of space out here. Originally, I thought we were going to have to put houses here because we needed more housing, but the skyscraper over there, Jenga Heights, has kind of filled that gap for us. So what I reckon we're going to do is put a... Uh, ooh, where are we going to put these? Hmm. Well, actually, the libraries would work quite well near to the suburbs, I think. It's going to be a shame to lose these trees, but like with the other areas, we can always replant trees if we need them in the future. So what are we going to do? Where is the build? Oh, we didn't bring the builder's tool. What a fool. What a massive fool I am. So let's look at some styles for some libraries. Oh no, we're going to do the composter's hut first because that has to be quite far away from the suburbs because it stinks, obviously. And next to the concrete mixer's hut is kind of perfect. But which is the smallest? Because, oh my god, these can be pretty freaking huge. So medieval oak is very big. We'll start with level five raise it up yeah so medieval oak medieval spruce these are all way too massive what else is going on here mesa is a bit big nordic hmm well nordic looks a bit big as well what's the deal with all these composter huts being so huge yeah you know what i'm kind of tempted to go nordic on this one but we'll keep looking sandstone space wars whoa space wars is tiny oh man i can imagine actually doing a desert playthrough of mine colonies with space wars would be really cool. Stone, oh, the stone one is very small. Look at this, level five, and it's freaking tiny. How do they get away with that? Oh my God, you know what? This could be the one. We're late in the game here. It's the last days of war, and uh, we don't really want a big expensive build. So a stone building, a stone composter's hut, looks so cheap to make. And in fact, if you guys at home are thinking about, you know, budget builds and you don't want to go cave style the stone style looks very much budget oh my god true dwarven looks crazy warped way too expensive way too much nether oh now caledonia this is quite stylish but it's also very compact uh but i don't like how much of it is outside and there's a lot of these abrasive white blocks Man, the medieval ones are just so huge. Well, okay, it's going to be stone. It's a nice, cool, simple look. And we can kind of squeeze it over here in the back by the walls. So there we go. Perfect. 
We're going to have to dig away some of the dirt, but this is an ideal location for what we're looking to do. So what's going to be next? Well, that's how big the composter's hut is. I have a feeling that the libraries are all going to be pretty frickin' massive. Now, the medieval oak, it was never any question. This is always going to be the biggest one that we could choose. But what are the other sizes like? Uh, yeah, and immediately look at this. The Mesa one is much, much smaller. So Medieval Oak is a really, really... Oh my god, Nordic's huge. Look at the size of that peaked roof. Sandstone looks very impressive, but it's not really in the style of our colony. Oh my god, look at the Space Wars library. This thing looks freaking amazing. So futuristic. Now, True Dwarven is actually pretty compact, and it still looks pretty cool. So this could be a choice. Oh my god, look at the Caledonian one. This thing's amazing. It's like got four spires. It's also very compact, look at this. But it does reach up very, very high. So I'm not sure, what do you guys reckon? Oh yeah, I couldn't build it here because it would ruin my railway. So it may seem like a bit of a weird choice, but the only real way we can afford to fit these in is by going True Dwarven. While the True Dwarven does have like a flat roof, what we can do is after the building is built, come over and uh, build a peaked roof on top to make it look like more like the rest of the colony. So I reckon this is what we're going to do. Again, a bit of a weird one, but I think that's fine, you know? And there we go, snug as a bug in a rug. Now, can we actually fit another library, the direct other side? That could actually work really well. There we go, perfect. Snug as a bug in a rug. It's almost symmetrical to the other library. And again, we can put our own twist of a peaked roof on top of this building to make it look like the rest of the colony. Well, let's do it, let's pull the trigger. Boom, and we'll get these buildings underway. Well, okay, that's the tasks assigned, our builders have stuff to do, and we've got research cooking away, nice and slowly in the background, so what does the clipboard say we have to do around the colony? Well, let's take a look. Ooh, magma blocks, of course, that's something that we always need. Let's go into the nether and grab a few more of those. Ooh, yeah, lots more construction tape around here. There is so much more to be built on the colony. Just when you think everything is almost level 5, you have to build some more buildings, and you find buildings that aren't even level 3 or 4. Oof, but look at this. The nether miner now is level 5. Oh, no, it's level 4. Oh, we've called it Death Sentence. That's right, yeah, because it's basically Bridge 4. Anyway, let's go in and see if we can get some magma blocks. I don't want to waste the durability on this netherite hammer, though, so I'm going to grab myself a normal pickaxe. Why not? Just one of these iron pieces of trash. And here we go. Yeah, there's loads of magma blocks here. It's super easy to gather. Especially when you consider the fact that I am basically fireproof, so I can just jump on these magma blocks and not get burned. There's no sizzle. In fact, also, let's get cocky with this. I can also run through the flames. Haha, <laughs> yes! I'm immune to fire, which is always a good place to be. Well, that make, that's got me thinking, actually. If you could be immune to anything in real life, what would it be? Would it be electricity, so you couldn't get electric shocked? Would it be fire, so you couldn't get burned? Oh, maybe. Maybe it should be, like, um, like space. It's like you're, you're immune to vacuum, so you can go into space on your own and uh, not, not need a suit. Uh-oh. Oh, rude dudes. Ten o'clock. Shoot to kill. Aim to thrill. Get out of here, scum. Over a stack of uh, magma now, so I'll just bring this back, because I don't really foresee us needing a huge amount. It's not a very common building requirement. Now, here we go. While we're at the industrial district and at the level 5 smelter, let's try out the ore multiplication. So basically, oh, yeah. at level 5, uh, no, better not. the smeltery can triple your ore if you're lucky, but it depends on the stats of your dude. So as you can see, the stats affect the smelting and working speed and the chance of multiplying ore, and it's strength that's the big one. So 40 strength, I think, gives this guy a 40% chance of tripling the ore. It always doubles, that's a given, but there's a 40% chance that uh, every time he smelts something, he'll get three instead of two. Ah, so my bad, it looks like you use netherite scrap instead at the blacksmith to make netherite ingots. Yeah, he's the only person in mine colonies that has a recipe for them. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Well, okay, let's go and teach the blacksmith what to do with our netherite. Oh, yeah. uh. 
So the regular Minecraft recipe is four netherite and four gold makes a netherite ingot, and unfortunately the blacksmith, it's kind of the same. I don't think there's any way we can really multiply our netherite, so this is what we've got to do. But it is worth teaching him this, because I think the nether miner has a chance of getting ancient debris. Oh, there we go. There goes the stone smeltery. Amazing. Wait a minute. Someone's automatically taught this guy netherite gear. When did he learn this? Anyway, there we go. Netherite ingots now available in the blacksmith to be crafted. I'm not sure if we have any netherite in the warehouse, do we? Nev. No, we haven't got any yet. What about ancient debris? No, none of that either. Oh man, here go the houses. So I guess those have started to spin up in the background. So let's come over here and take a look at our level 5 stone smeltery. And again, yeah, a lot of these buildings don't change massively between levels 4 and 5. 3 to 4 is always big, 2 to 3 is always quite big. But 4 to 5, not so. I guess honestly it really depends on the building, right? Sometimes it's big, sometimes it ain't. Oh, look at this. Very cool. Oh, I like this. So we've got some builder projects going on in the background. And requests-wise, everything seems to be coming up Millhouse. Oh, right. Magma blocks, of course. In you go. So let's come over here now to the town hall and monitor our colony health. Because at the moment, things are kind of doing well. It's just we have a bit of a problem because we've got too many unemployed dudes here in the colony. And yeah, a look at happiness, and I see some greens. Only one red, which is injury. I don't know who got sick or who got injured. But if you look here, yeah. Ooh, now guards is orange now, not red. We're getting a lot more guards. That's really good news. Unemployment is actually okay. What? But there's loads of unemployed dudes. The real problems are getting sleep, idling as a worker. Oh, right, workers with nothing to do. Oh, yeah. Well, that'll just happen, right? Because there's not much going on in the colony. You know what? Overall, this is a pretty good rate. Lots of greens. Oranges aren't amazing, but there's no reds apart from injuries. So honestly, our colonists are pretty happy. Oh man, amazing. Now let's head on up to the military rise where I can show you guys, oh, there's the two dragons, where most of our hires from last episode came. So Horace McPoodle, Christine Isabella, they're both knights at night school or the Knights Academy. Oh, wait, no, we never set this up. I built it, but I never set this to hire dudes. Oh, man, what a mistake it's a maker. So, the Combat Academy, Manage Workers, and Knight Squire set it to automatic, and this should get a whole bunch of dudes hired up to train as knights, further helping with our unemployment problem. So thank you for watching this episode of Better Minecraft Mine Colonies. This episode, we've done a fair amount. You can see in the background there, we've got the libraries built, or rather queued up to be built, so the builders will come over and do that. We've got, uh, what is that, a composter on the way. We're going to get the engineer's hut up to level 5. Most of industrial district now is level 5 as well. And what I'll try and do between episodes is make sure the glass blower's hut and the overlook huts behind me, the Fletcher's hut, and the Dyer's hut are all level 5. Now, once again, our goal is 200 dudes. So what I also want to do is make sure every single one of these houses that's topside is actually level 5 and not level 4, because they're all level 4 at the moment. But a massive thank you to all of you guys for watching. Oh, bam, there goes some fireworks, so something has been set off. But until next time, a massive thank you to my Patreon members, and fingers crossed very soon we will be able to end the series. So until then, take care.